building a DIY solderless quick connect guitar wiring harness. I had a viewer named AJ reach out to me and ask me the following. I wanted to see if you could build me a solderless wiring harness for an Epiphone Les Paul Melody Maker E1. I have one on the way. I'm going to use a single bridge DiMarzio SDS-1 strat size pickup. No neck pickup. I'd like a 500k CTS volume pot with a treble bleed. Can this also be made into a solderless wire harness? I want to be able to use a small flat blade screwdriver to open the terminal, insert the wires, then pull out the screwdriver to lock the wires in place. I do not have any soldering experience or tools, so I'd really prefer a solderless harness. Can you do this? I thought about it for a while, and I kind of came to the conclusion that this would be a challenge and actually be really kind of fun to build. I told him I'd do it. I also decided that I'd build one for myself. I no longer had the Epiphone Les Paul Melody Maker E1 that I had used in a prior video. I found a beat up version of the guitar on Reverb for $150 and I ordered it. You can pick up this guitar for about $150 to $200. It's really a great introductory or punk guitar. No frills and looks like the original Gibson Melody Maker with the very distinctive pickguard. The guitar from the factory comes with ceramic pickups and inexpensive electronics. Oddly enough, I did have a pickguard for some reason for an Epiphone Les Paul Melody Maker, so I'd use this for building AJ's harness and I'd send it to him this way. As AJ requested, he'd most definitely need a treble bleed circuit installed, otherwise his tone would drop out halfway on turning the volume pot down. The circuit is really easy to build. You start with either a ceramic disc, .001 UF capacitor, or an orange drop capacitor the same value. I really like the disc type of capacitors for this because the legs are closer together and fits on the two legs of the volume pot better. Next, you solder a 150k ohm resistor across the two legs of the capacitor. There's actually multiple ways of making one of these. This is just the way that I've learned how to do it and it works. Installing the treble bleed is actually pretty easy. You install one leg in the input post of the volume pot. It's the far left post and one leg in the output post of the volume pot, which is the middle post. This is actually the place where the wire goes from the volume pot to the output jack. The whole circuit ends up costing you a few pennies. Granted, you do end up buying a bag, each of the capacitors and resistors, for about $10 total, but you now have enough parts to build treble bleeds for you and your entire neighborhood for the rest of your life. I researched how I do the solderless part of the harness. On Amazon, I found a pitch PCB mount screw terminal block connector that came in a pack of 50 and it had terminal blocks with two connectors, three connectors, and four connectors. This cost me $14.99. I've tried harnesses that use the small clip terminal blocks and I kept on having problems with the wires pulling out easily. There doesn't seem to be enough tension to hold the wire in properly, so I really think that the screw in model is best. Link to the screw version of this part is in the video description and comments. One note is you'll need a very small flat blade screwdriver like what comes with an eyeglass toolkit. I didn't have one and I took a throwaway flat blade screwdriver that companies give out with logos on them and I ground it down with my Dremel till it fit perfectly. Next, I found a small PC board that I could solder the terminal block to. I got a package of 10 of them for $9.99. Again, the link to this is in the video description and also in the comments. One mistake that I made right out of the gate is I installed the terminal block on the short side of the PCB board. This caused my harness basically to short out because all of the lines in that row were actually connected. Once I installed the terminal block on the long side of the PC board, the, everything basically worked. The second mistake that I made was not understanding that the locks for each of the terminal blocks were actually locked right out of the package. There's no instructions, so you just kind of had to figure this out on your own. You ultimately have to turn the screw counterclockwise until then the lock opens and you can insert the wire. At first I was planning on using double-sided tape to stick the small PC board to the back of the pickguard. This did not work. I could not get the board to stick to the tape dependably. 
I finally decided to take industrial super glue and applied a small amount to the back of the volume pot on AG's wiring harness. There was about a third of the PC board that didn't have any conductor on it, so I didn't have to worry about it shorting out to the volume pot. I basically then held it there in place until it finally was adhered to the back of the pot. For my wiring harness, I had a three-way pickup selector toggle switch, a CTS250K volume pot, a CTS250K tone pot, and two single coil Stratocaster pickups. I used a four terminal block since I'd have four wires coming from the two pickups. I soldered each of the hot leads to the back of the terminal from the three-way switch, and then soldered two ground leads as well. The super glue worked just as well adhering the PC board to the back of the tone pot this time. I connected the four pickup leads to the corresponding terminals, and the guitar passed the tap test when I plugged it into an amp. I already had a set of Stratocaster pickups in the shop, so I used a neck in the neck position and the bridge Stratocaster pickup in the bridge position and left out the middle position pickup. The neck of the guitar was amazingly dirty. I cleaned it really well and then I put the Monty's wax on it. I also had a set of the Clusen drop-in tuners that are made to replace the horrible low-end tuners that come in the entry-level Squires and Epiphones. These go for about $42 at Stumac, but you don't have to do any modifications to install them. The link is in this video description and in the comments. I'm very pleased with how all of this turned out. I do not need the quick disconnect block on my circuit on my guitar, but I wanted to see how it would hold up over time and the audio quality. The little Epiphone guitar does have a bolt-on neck, which will draw the ire of anyone that is a true Gibson disciple. I have no illusions about what the guitar is, other than it is an amazingly inexpensive little guitar that is a fun little banger that makes great sound slash noise and is a total blast to play. I'll probably donate mine later to a local music education nonprofit near me once I'm done playing around with it. Mm -hmm. 